Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Orkild, and I'm here with Shauna James, the Executive Director of the Schemer Art Center. Thank you, Chris. It is great to be here once again with you and with everyone here tonight to celebrate tonight's honoree and our eighth annual Schemer Honors event. We are so pleased to have the opportunity to showcase this artist, an iconic Arizona artist, internationally recognized for his modern perspectives of the American West. Joining us tonight as well are some of the previous honorees who are also amazing artists and are still impacting others around them through their art, including jewelry, painting, sculpting, photography, as well as other mixed media. We have a great evening planned and we will once again be taking you on an amazing journey, showcasing this year's honoree, an Arizona artist who has indeed had a successful career and made an impact in the state through his art. We are going to share with you his journey and show you his incredibly striking and moving works of art. This is always a special evening for us here at the Schemer Art Center when we can gather together leaders of our community who have taken the time to be here and come together to honor an amazing artist. But then again, the Schemer Art Center has a long history of recognizing Arizona artists. In fact, next year we will celebrate our 40th anniversary serving the community from this site which was originally built in 1919 and then remodeled twice before it became the winter home of the Sur family from Oil City, Pennsylvania. Of course, we would not be here tonight were it not for Martha Schemer, a successful real estate investor who after buying and selling many acres of land all across the state, including a few acres right here at 44th and Camelback, bought and donated this site to the city of Phoenix back in 1984. From the very start, the mission of the Schemer Art Center has always been to support and showcase Arizona artists. For 40 years, we have also had the support of the Schemer family, who have helped the Schemer Art Center be successful and continue giving back to our community. So a big thank you from us also goes to them. Tonight, we will have the opportunity to learn more about our 2023 Schemer Honors honoree and his nearly 45-year career as an illustrator, painter, and sculptor. We will get to share his journey and look at many of his works of art. We have an exciting program ahead, and although we are always doing something at the Schemer Art Center on a daily basis, it is often our four community events, including Schemer Honors, that leave the largest impression. Absolutely, so let's get started. Tell us about the Schemer Honors. Our Schemer Honors event was created in 2016, modeled after the Kennedy Honors Program. We decided each year the Schemer Art Center would select one Arizona artist to honor who has had a successful career, made an artistic and cultural impact, and given back to the state. Since 2016, we have had the privilege of highlighting seven amazing artists who all represent these values. These artists include Angela Tassoni, Jim Wade, Meryl Mahaffey, Bill Nebaker, Beth Ames-Swartz, Mark Klett, and Mame Kratz. Tonight we add our eighth name to this impressive list of artists who have achieved great success in their careers and made an impact through art in Arizona. This year, we are pleased to introduce you to an artist who we know for certain is not only an inspiration to other artists, but also to any person who views the American West as he showcased it. Our 2023 Schemer Honors honoree exemplifies the values of this event. Born in 1942, Ed Mel spent an idyllic childhood in what was then the small western city of Phoenix, Arizona. After graduating from Phoenix Junior College with an Associate of Arts degree, he enrolled in the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles to pursue his interest in advertising and illustration. After Los Angeles, Mel went to work at Young and Rubicam, one of the top advertising agencies in New York, and Kenyon and Eckhart, where he worked on major accounts. Finding art directing creatively stifling, he moved on to illustration, teaming up with an old friend to form Sagebrush Studios in Manhattan. Both were among the first airbrush artists to emerge in the 1960s. His skill in this newly rediscovered medium attracted clients such as Tang and National Lampoon, for which they created two covers. 
However, in 1970, when Mel was given an opportunity to return to Arizona to teach summer classes in silk screening and drawing on the Hopi Reservation, he welcomed the chance to visit his home state. Charged with imagery from this trip, he moved back to Arizona in 1973 to begin a career in fine art. The American West, specifically the Colorado Plateau and Sonoran Desert, have been the center of his inspiration, with an occasional focus on botanicals, animals, and people. Mel brings an architectonic eye to the desert, emphasizing graphic elements and stripping away details that no longer serve his vision. Mel has won many awards for his work, including the Purchase Award at the Autry's 2021 Masters for Cascading Canyon Storm. His art has been exhibited and collected by many museums, including the Phoenix Art Museum, Denver Art Museum, Gil Kreese Museum, James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art, and Booth Museum. It is also in many corporate and private collections, nationally and internationally, including collections such as Diane Keaton, the Forbes Collection, and the Ann Schultz Collection. Ed's life as an artist has been chronicled in major art publications. His biography, Beyond the Visible Terrain, The Art of Ed Mel, was published in 1997. In 2012, Mel designed the Arizona Centennial postage stamp depicting Sedona's Cathedral Rock, and he was named Artist of the Year at the Arizona Governor's Art Awards. The opportunities he had to glimpse areas of our state from all different angles and then capture the beauty of majestic clouds culminating in a majestic Arizona sunrise or sunset are breathtaking and unforgettable. We are so pleased that this artist will now add an exhibition at the Schemer Art Center to his impressive list of accomplishments. At this time, we are pleased to introduce you to our 2023 Schemer Honors honoree, Ed Mel. So my grandfather used to give us a ream of paper, which was like, you know, regular typing paper and art supplies every year. So he was, you know, he was uh, always, I guess he was helping us out. You know, he didn't talk much about it, but, but he did give us that for some reason or other. So I was dyslexic, so I had a lot of trouble in school. Um, it affects your memory more than anything, like memorizing you know, chapters in a book right. and that kind of thing. And so I didn't do very well in tests, which is not an indication of your intelligence. It's just part of it isn't working. Music and art are so important, I think, to people, even if that's not their vocation, I think it just helps them yeah. the rest of it. Uh, I went back to New York and uh, worked for a while and started making sort of plans to moved back to Arizona. Uh, I moved back to Phoenix and I still was doing illustration my, uh, to make a living. My brother, um, he was, my brother Lee and I, and my brother Frank at times, uh, did some etched glass stuff to make a living, you know. I was doing a lot of drawing and thinking, you know, and then, you know how it is, it just one day it's like, okay, I, I kind of know in my head before I even, put anything down what I wanted to do. And my early paintings were very minimal and right. um, they were sort of a modernist approach to the landscape, very minimal. And then more and more I started adding more information on them. And then I evolved from that almost to my version of realism. And then I, I started going back to the modernist stuff too. You know, I need to put more information in there to keep my interest right. as well as anything else. And, and then then you just start going down a road and the landscape, you can't ask for better, better landscape than in the Southwest. The color, the variety of form, everything is so great. So, so I, I kept, I, I've always said an artist has to keep himself entertained mm. if he's bored with his work at shows, so. We'd done some other work for National Lampoon, and they said, we want you to do many doing in this position. <laughs> and uh, so the first one we did, we said, they're going to get sued. So we changed, tried to change her enough 
took it and they said, we want dead on 40s Minnie Mouse, redo it. So we redid it. And of course they got sued. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until reading an Esquire uh, article, I think it was Henry Beard or one of the guys from there, that they said, he talked about this, that it was intentional to get sued by Disney because they only got sued for $10,000. And the magazine was struggling, and supposedly this cover saved the magazine. My family was very open to it. My older brother, Frank, was kind of the first artist in the family. And uh, he had more natural talent than any of us, I think. And um, he, he sent stuff to Mad Magazine to see if, when he was... 16 years old. Yeah. Early on, that's what I drew is cars. And I went, my dream was to be a car designer. And that changed. I went to junior college and I had a friend, uh, Mel Abert. Uh, he and I were kind of equal talents in junior college artistically. And then he went on to Art Center uh, a few semesters ahead of me and came back with his portfolio and he laid it out on my parents' living room floor and I was blown away. A lot of the modernists from New Mexico, from Raymond Johnson, Andrew Dosberg, a lot of people that, um, that put a twist to, to their uh, uh, subject matter. George O'Keefe falls in that category. And, you know, there was a lot of great painters in New York that I saw in the great museums there that, and it all goes into the filter, kind of, and, and then something comes out, you know. But we're all a continuation of, of um, art history. You know, we all have our influences, and I think that's important as well. So. I eliminate a lot of uh, unnecessary information, I think, in my work. Uh, I'm trying to get down to the raw bones of it. Uh, sort of what you'd remember in your mind almost, rather than what your eye really would see. In 1985, I did my first sculpture, and I got that the large piece at Scottsdale, uh, in Scottsdale at Main and Marshall Way. In 93, I did that piece, and it was, I felt very fortunate to get it. It was, uh, it was really fun. Just trying to find something new it, each day is always an exciting thing, making something out of nothing. I started out doing very minimal modernist pieces, very angular and very simplistic, really. And then over the years, it evolved into my kind of version of realism, which is still an exaggeration from reality. And then at a certain point, I wanted to revisit my, my roots, so to speak. So I started painting in, in two styles, which I do today. The fact that I've done a lot of realist landscapes, that all influences me when I try to abstract them. Then I take that information, even break it up more and abstract it more. And that is where I feel like I'm hitting on something brand new. And I think that's, that makes it exciting. I, I basically, you know, the clay is so forgiving. So, because it's oil-based, it stays flexible. And uh, I just had a thing, and had a particular piece in mind, and I worked on it over the summer, I remember. And uh, in the fall, I took it to the foundry, we cast it, sold out the addition fairly quick. And so it made me realize it was another way to express myself. And, have, you know, when you're doing two-dimensional all the time, it's nice to do three-dimensional. Now, I don't do a lot of bronzes. I mostly am a painter, but I uh, enjoy the, the change up for sure. I was living in New York, working in advertising and illustration. And after five years, I became kind of disenchanted with it. It was, uh, it got boring. And I, I got tired of people telling me what to do in terms of my art. I was invited to teach at the Hopis uh, at uh, Hote Villa, Third Mesa, for a summer arts program. 
going from New York City to a village of 200 people on the Hopi Reservation and spending two and a half months there and that beauty changed my life forever. I decided to return and it was during that time that I sort of mentally formulated what I'm doing now. The irony of it is, is I came back kind of thinking I was just going to do some modern art and and my father kept going, Ed, you should paint the landscape and, and the West and cowboys. And I'm thinking, Dad, you're really corny. But <laughs> so he loved it when I was really painting it, and sculpting it. I think when you're born here, the, the West just gets in your soul. Leaving was great because you love it that much more. Deserts and streams The rise of Dosca Basis And the outlaws I see in my dreams of love Superstitions and all The warmth you give at sunrise Your sunsets put music in a soul the magic in me Ooh, and Arizona You're the lifeblood of me I love you Arizona Desert dust on the wind The sage and cactus are blooming And the smell of the rain on your skin You're the magic in me Arizona You're the lifeblood of me Your mountains, deserts, and streams The rise of Dosca Basis And the outlaws I see in my dreams 